The Adjustments Inspector provides PhotoPaint users with a range of non-destructive features and enhancements for more efficient and accurate image editing. This inspector provides instant access to the most critical and frequently used filters, enabling you to see results, in real time and in context, of one or more effects. Filters can be applied to an entire image or to specific parts of an image by the use of masks. All adjustments are available in Corel Draw as well. In this tutorial, we are using the Corel Photo Paint March 2022 subscriber update version. This subscription exclusive update has a wealth of user inspired enhancements to frequently used photo editing features and an updated adjust menu with new tools, shortcuts, and commands. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. In Corel Photo Paint, the Adjustments Inspector should be open by default. If it isn't open, it can be turned on via the Window Inspectors menu or by clicking the three-dot icon below the list of open inspectors. This inspector centralizes several adjustment tools in one place and has several presets, which I'll demonstrate farther on. From the available filters, Histogram, White Balance, and Light are displayed by default. Each can be expanded or collapsed or removed. To remove the light adjustment, I can click its Options icon and choose Remove, or click the Add Adjustments icon and deselect Light from the list. The Add Adjustments list can also be used to add filters, and I'll bring back the light adjustment. The list of filters can be controlled in the Adjust menu as well, where I can also find auto adjustment options from several filters. Many of the adjustments also have keyboard shortcuts to toggle them on and off. The Show by Default option opens a window in which I can choose the adjustments I want to be included in the inspector by default for any document. I'll start with some basic image corrections using the light and white balance adjustments. In this photo, the subject is too bright and the contrast is too low. To correct this, I'll start in the light adjustment and reduce the brightness setting by moving the slider to the left. The bright areas are still too bright, so I'll reduce highlights and midtones as well and sharpen the image by bumping up the contrast just a bit. Now I'll open white balance, and reducing the temperature makes the subject look warmer, producing an autumnal sunset mood. These sliders are dynamic, so as I change the temperature, the available tints change as well. Each of these non-destructive adjustments can be toggled off or on to see the impact of each effect. For this image, I want to start with the same adjustments used in the previous image. With the first image open, I'll choose Adjust, Copy Adjustments, then switch to the other image and choose Adjust, Paste Adjustments. I can also save a set of filters as a preset, which I'll show farther on. To bring more color into play, I'll display the Vibrance adjustment and increase the vibrance to bring out more of the background. The saturation can come up as well, but not so much that the subject looks unnatural. Returning to the first image, I'll bring color balance into the inspector. Color balance is used to individually adjust colors in the shadows, highlights, and midtones. There is also an option to use the eyedropper to sample an area that should be neutral gray for reference in adjusting other colors. When I move the yellow blue slider for highlights toward blue, the sky and parts of the landscape shift toward a cooler blue, which works nicely for our subject. For shadows, Moving the magenta green slider a bit toward green removes the red cast from the foreground. I can reset any filter individually by clicking its Reset icon. To reset all filters, I can click the Reset All button at the bottom of the inspector. I still have all of the adjustment filters in the inspector, but all settings are back to their default values. The black and white filter helps bring some creativity to your photo editing. As soon as this adjustment is added, the image turns to grayscale. I can use the color sliders to control how dominant the individual colors are in the black and white subject. I'll increase the red channel to achieve more contrast, then turn on split tone to go for a hip retro look. I'll choose colors for shadows and highlights and increase each saturation level. I'll reset this filter to go back to grayscale. We've seen how to apply an adjustment to an entire image and adjustments can be applied partially as well. 
I'll click the Options icon for black and white and choose Local Adjustment Mode. This activates the most recently used mask tool, which in my case is Smart Selection Mask. I'll carefully trace around the subject, and I can use the mask options in the property bar to edit the mask, such as using Additive Mode, to capture some of the pixels that were left out. The grayscale filter is applied only to the subject, but I can choose Mask, Invert Mask, to apply the filter to the background instead, then turn off the mask marquee. In the inspector, a local adjustment is indicated by a horizontal line. I'll now demonstrate presets, so I'll remove all current adjustments from the inspector. At the top of the inspector, I can access a collection of predefined presets in several categories, such as sepia tone in the black and white category, or two tone in the color category. All adjustments included with the selected preset are added to the inspector, and I can make my own tweaks to any adjustments or add more filters. I'll add back the black and white adjustment and increase the red channel as before. I can also create my own presets, which is handy for images that have extensive filters applied, since I can save time by not applying the same filters one by one to other images. To save my current adjustments as a preset, I'll click the plus icon at the top of the inspector. I'll assign a preset name, and I can add the preset to an existing category, or I can create a new category. After saving the preset, I'll go back to my first image, open the presets dropdown, and find and apply my preset. Once the image has all the effects I want, I can click Flatten to apply all the effects permanently. This clears all applied effects in the inspector, which means I can no longer adjust any of those filters. But I could continue adding new effects. Switching now to Corel Draw, adjustments and presets are applied from the Properties Inspector. With the imported bitmap selected, I'll open the Properties Inspector to the Effects tab. I can find and apply my preset which applies all of the filters from the preset. I can turn each on and off, edit any filter, or select and delete a filter. For more filters, I can click Add Effect and choose Adjust, and this menu includes an Auto Adjust option, as well as the other adjustments available in PhotoPaint. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on adjustments in PhotoPaint and CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.